Thanks for tuning back in. I'm Tommy Campbell, still bald, still in my basement, and still laughing at the fact that Marjorie Taylor Greene's book was printed in Canada. I love it. For Lauren Boebert's book, Ted Cruz did the intro, and for Marjorie Taylor Greene's, she gave his home country some jobs. Happy Thanksgiving to all that are celebrating, getting the family together for domestic chaos, football, and suffering through the jello casserole brought by the person you were forced to invite. Nobody wanted you here. This week, Biden had a birthday, and the barely younger Donald Trump released a letter from his doctor regarding his own health. I'll be having a laugh getting into the Trump medical letter, reaction to Biden's birthday, turkey price fear-mongering over at Fox, more crazy from lumpy pillow manufacturer gone mad Mike Lindell, Trump rambling about Russian showers, a new genuine page from Lauren Boebert's book, and more, but first, this. We should not be paying for you know, private jets, uh, five-star hotels uh, and resorts, uh, personal makeup person, a personal hairdresser, uh, uh, unlimited number of shrimp cocktails, champagne uh, for the national uh, chairwoman. Uh, she needs- Sounds like a nice job, to, by the way. <laughs> I mean, you have look, me a we shrimp should be cocktail. That. You would think they would have had her at makeup. But then again, you had me at shrimp cocktail, I guess it makes her think of the size and scent of Don Jr.'s. Nobody should be shocked that the head of the RNC gets to live well. Millions pour in, but at least it's spent on seafood and flights, not Sephora, OnlyFans, and Botox. But then again, who knows? It is pouring MAGA tears. What a week it's been already. Please have a laugh with the good people in the comments while I mock the latest and stupid and more. something that's great uh they want me to tell you to go out and sign up we have a book here beautiful book look at this book how beautiful that is see you read pictures but it basically is you sign up and you become a cook you read pictures read look at and comprehend the meaning of written or printed matter by mentally interpreting the characters or symbols of which it is composed it is the best novel i've ever read i never learned to read music i'll go to bed and read for a while i'm going to read pictures if this man was not born into huge generational wealth he'd be nowhere in life nowhere I need a statement here so that i can uh, make sure i get this right um um, okay, here's what I'll read to you, everybody. I just love the closed glasses hitting him in the face. It takes him a while to go through his phone, partly because he's terrible with technology and mostly because he has to sift through all of the accountability partner notifications. I need a statement here so that I can uh, make sure I get this right. Um, um, Okay, here's what I'll read to you, everybody. Dr. Aaron Wald is a doctor of osteopathic medicine in New Jersey. He's a bone joint and muscle guy and weighing in on a diaper defeated former president. A quick search shows that Aaron Wald's area of expertise is below the state average in several relevant fields, including obesity, chronic diabetes, underactive thyroid, coronary artery disease, and arterial fibrillation. He's a bone and muscle guy. Maybe you'll look into the spurs that have plagued Trump. He notes that Trump reduced his weight and continues daily physical activity while maintaining a rigorous schedule. Going by my own eyes, he still looks like an overspray tan potato sack. Riding around in a lopsided golf cart isn't physical, and his rigorous schedule is being ferried between court and rallies peppered with confusion. When he's done, he hits up a fast food joint promising to buy everyone a meal and then just takes off. The thing is, this letter is dated September 13th. This happened over two months ago, and there are no details. It doesn't note Trump's weight, his cholesterol levels, or if he's currently on any medication. Going by Trump's history with medical doctors from boozy Ronnie Jackson to the guy who passed the joint to you at the Stones concert, it's pretty clear that this clean bill of health was, well, Mitch McConnell. I mean, we went to go buy a turkey today. It was $90 for a turkey. The price of stamps is up 32% in the last four years. But it's all a choice by Joe Biden. That is what Bidenomics is. 
Okay, are they trying to scare people into not making food for guests? Because a basic search shows your frozen butterball averaging 2656 and a fresh Genio at 2092. These are 98 cents a pound. Show me this 90 pound dinosaur turkey you got off Mike Johnson's Ark, Jason. Come on. Turkey is crazy affordable, so when I go to the trouble of doing it, I grill a big one on the rotisserie and then vacuum seal portions for months to come. Personally, when it's Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, St. Patrick's Day, any big holiday, I usually stray away from turkey and do a prime rib. That's me. Okay. Even at Whole Foods, or as many call it, Whole Paycheck, their site shows frozen organic turkey for $2.99 a pound or 365 by Whole Foods Market frozen whole turkey for $1.99 a pound. And just in case, just in case you find yourself in Target picking up the Pride Nutcracker, the Black Disabled Santa, or something from the aisle of Marjorie Taylor Greene protests, you can score turkeys there for 99 cents a pound. The entertainment channel for Mary Cousins just throws out these huge numbers, and I think if you show up at Walmart and the turkey's $20 and you're a Fox viewer, they should mark it up to 90. That's your $70 tax for wearing a MAGA hat and believing these morons. Occupied, would you step forward? Would you volunteer to take over the RNC if the president so asked you? A hundred percent I would. That, then I would have all the tools I need to fix, secure these elections and immediately. Uh, we've already got everything in place. We just need resources and, and the, their blessing behind us. Absolutely. Mike Lindell. Lindell pays a big chunk of Bannon's salary, and even he cannot keep it together when Lindell says he'll take the RNC job. Just look at him. Look at that face. For those that don't remember, Mike ran for RNC chair and lost spectacularly. He managed to get four votes out of 167 because they knew that the guy who turned his business into a money burn pit would not be the top choice for promoting their brand. Thank you. I see every tip from pennies to dollars. They are hugely appreciated and help make this show possible. If you love what I do here and you can afford to help out, throw me a buck with the PayPal link in the pinned comment or drop me a super thanks with this button. And please take two seconds after this video to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. These things are free and help the show grow. Thank you. Anyway, can we get rid of these teleprompters? I, you know, we, we have a president. We don't even know who the president is who's ever loading the teleprompter. No, I don't think we need that in Florida. Let's get those done. You got to speak from the heart. It's not about reading off a teleprompter. We are the freest state in all of these United States. Yeah, speak from the heart. Looks down at his script. It's fine to use a teleprompter. Nobody thought this was... A negative thing until Trump started calling others out for using one and he uses one and still screws up on the regular. And a very big hello to a place where we've done very well. Sioux Falls. Thank you very much Sioux Falls. And thank you. So Sioux City, let me ask you. Oh, it's Sioux City. Okay. Yes, we loaded that on the teleprompter, Mr. Trump, but you're a moron. And the times he doesn't use one, it's because he's saying the same things he's said for years. So I think he's got that down quite well. Report, Sandra, when you got 81 candles on the birthday cake, I'm not sure if it's just so hard to blow them out or, you know, that could contribute to global warming. <laughs> <laughs> Either of those things. Well, I think you need a blowtorch to light that many. My son turned six recently, and you gotta move fast, because that wax drips at Giuliani hair dye speed. But when it's Trump's birthday, the Botox rejects on Fox aren't counting candles. They're talking about what a great party he threw and how good he looks. He was with four hookers. You think that was good that night to go up and tell my wife, it's not true, darling, I love you very much. It's not true. Actually, that one she didn't believe because she said he's a germaphobe. He's not into that, you know? He's not into golden showers, as they say they call that. He's not. I don't like that idea. No, I didn't. I thought that would be a big problem. I was going to have a rough night, but that one she was very good on. She said, no. The more Trump says it's not true, the more it is true, okay? Let's just check the notes here. A proper germaphobe wouldn't have been a vehement anti-masker. 
I think Paul McCartney should re-record Golden Slumbers to mock Trump. This guy lied about Stormy and who knows how many other affairs, but this story was too far-fetched for her? Go on, Trump. Keep saying golden showers. It's hilarious. For those new to the show, I'm glad you found me. Thank you. For a year, I've been reading a genuine page from Lauren Boebert's book. This really is a ton of fun. I only do it once a week, and it's been pretty wild. Let's get back to it. I knew it wasn't enough cash for that Groupon unlicensed dentist I bookmarked, but it was a start to sorting out Lauren's old corncob face hole. I managed to lure Jason out of Lady Buns with the promise of some holiday fun, seeing as he'd busted out the mistletoe belt buckle long ago. I figured Tyler could look after the boys a little longer while I got the elf costume out of the attic for some eggnogging. The snow was over my clear heels as we stumbled to the truck and it hit me that I was feeling a bit off from the whiskey beer and that random pill from the floor that made the walls breathe. Jason did not want me getting sick in the same F-150 where our son was made and born. I agreed that hurling Funyuns and beer on the seats would taint the legacy of our wholesome family. It was darn cold out, but Jason insisted it would be best for me to ride in the back of the truck. I agreed dog style was the safest position, so I was all for it on the condition that Mountain Dew join him up front. If there were ever a time that I truly needed my emotional support hamster, it was in the snowbed on that chilly Colorado night. But I tossed him to Jason, who kindly took the tall boy of Coors out of the cup holder to make a safe space for his furry co-pilot. I laid back in the snow and looked up at the stars in the sky. I'm not interested in astrology. I just need to find a bright one to focus on because on top of the boozing bed spins I was having, Jason was doing some serious donuts in the parking lot. This is one of the things that he loves to do. I don't think he's ever dropped our kids off at school in the winter without a few 360s while he lays on the horn and shouts out the window, they're your problem till four o'clock. School got out at three, but the Boberts live our life on our schedule because rules are for snowflakes. Well, right now, these snowflakes are landing all over my face where I like it. You see, the cold floaters are helping me sober up as I try to find the star from the Twinkle Twinkle song as the truck veers out of the parking lot and fishtails down the street. Some people put on winter tires, but in our family, this means we get out the bald ones that he took the orbital sander to so we could slide all over the city. I guess you could say my man is attracted to anything slippery and smooth, and that makes sense since he spent his adult life battling all the bumps and sores. It was like a fairy tale. If you've enjoyed this genuine page from Low Rent Booze Burbs book, let me know in the comments and I'll see about reading another page sometime soon. What a copium overdose. You are never leaving your mom's basement. Probably Trump's fault too, right? Mega tears. Grow up. Mega tears. Why would anyone vote for a Democrat is way beyond me. Mega tears. That's your $70 tax for wearing a MAGA hat and believing these morons. <laughs> With the promise of some holiday fun, seeing as he'd busted out the mistletoe belt buckle long ago. I knew it wasn't enough cash for that Groupon unlicensed dentist I'd bookmarked, but it was a start towards sorting out Lauren's old corn cob face hole. Actually, we thought he would have had you at the makeup. Um, you had me a shrimp cocktail. Makes her think of the size and scent of Don Jr.'s this little tiny shrimp. <laughs> Junior. Uh, size and scent. Sorry, not sorry. I figured Tyler could look after the boys a little longer while I got the elf costume out of the attic for some <laughs> while I got the elf costume out of the attic for some eggnogging. I don't think he's ever dropped our kids off at school in the winter without a few 360s while he lays on the shorn and sh shorn. I think Paul McCartney should re-record Golden Slumbers just to mock Trump. <laughs> well, right now, these snowflakes are landing all over my face where I like it. Thanks so much for watching. Help me out by joining us in the comments, sharing this video with a friend, and following me on social media. I am a one-man show here from script to screen, the editing, even the graphics please throw me a tip with the easy PayPal link or hit that super thanks button and be sure to check out my mugs that go great with those MAGA tears.
I am a stand-up comedian. I've played in 35 countries, and I've toured with Jim Jeffries for nearly 10 years. I have three albums and a brand new EP from my opening set on Jim's latest Netflix special. You can stream these on Spotify, Apple Music, or catch them on SiriusXM. Thanks for helping me make this show possible. Life short. Be cool. Be kind. Take care.